Hello and welcome. In this video, I will be talking about unused ideas that carried over from one Mad Max movie to the next. Let's begin. If you've watched at least two Mad Max movies, I'm sure you've noticed the similarities between them. Max loses his car, he wants to get it back, then there's a chase after a truck, and a big crash at the end. All of the Mad Max movies, except the first one, have a pretty similar themes and ideas. That is partially because George Miller sort of treats those movies like an ongoing project to improve on his ideas. It started with the first Mad Max that Miller wasn't very happy with. So when he got the budget for Mad Max 2, he wanted to execute the same ideas again, but better. And so we got more cars, more action, bigger explosions, but they're all shared common imagery and themes. All of those things are quite easily noticeable. There are even scene by scene comparisons on YouTube, so you can see for yourself how Miller tends to upgrade his ideas from one movie to the next. But I'm not here to talk about the obvious, and I know you're here to have a look behind the scenes, so today we're going to look at unused ideas and concepts that carried over from one Mad Max movie to the next without the audience even realizing it. Let's start with the small things. The original script for Mad Max 1 is a huge and detailed document that outlined the movie that Miller wanted to shoot. Believe it or not, but only about half of it was actually shot, and that half was later cut down some more in editing. One of the things that's missing from the movie is the exposition for the opening Knight Rider chase scene. If we look at the script though, it will tell us that 18 hours before the chase, the Knight Rider went berserk in Sun City. He killed a rookie cop named Con Cannon and started escaping across the outback. Obviously, that didn't make it into the film, but one little detail made it all the way to Fury Road. The name of the rookie cop that got killed, Con Cannon. That same name appears in Fury Road when Furiosa approaches the Vuvulini. My initiate mother was KD Con Cannon. I know that this is a very small thing to start with, but it's a perfect example of how such a simple idea could be scrapped in the very first movie and survive long enough to show up almost 40 years later in Fury Road. Now let's move on to Mad Max 2. In one of the earlier drafts for script of Mad Max 2, there's a small little scene that would show us how the Humongous' gang would communicate with each other in the wasteland. In that script, Max is delivering Nathan to the compound, and he is spotted by two bad cops. Then, they signaled the rest of the Humongous' gang by shining mirrors at them. Again, this idea was left out of Mad Max 2, but it was used 35 years later in Fury Road. When Furiosa leaves the Citadel, Rictus orders one of the Imperators to... Signal gas town! Convoys on its way! And then we see that the Citadel is using mirrors to communicate with gas town, the same way that the Humongous' gang would have communicated in Mad Max 2. Another unused concept that started with Mad Max 2 is the backstory of the Feral Kid. When watching the movie, we don't know absolutely anything about the Feral Kid. But as you should know by now, he also has a backstory. This backstory came about in a very interesting way. Yeah, well, when I was eight, I, I, uh, my next audition was the, for the role of the Feral Kid in Mad Max 2 and um, came down to, to uh, about three kids out of many and we were asked to come up with a story and, on how we thought we became the feral kid out in this wasteland. And, you know, my short story was that we were flying with my parents in a, in a plane, landed, no fuel, dad went to find fuel, never came back, mum went to find dad, never came back, and I was left to defend for myself, and wow, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's how it all, all began. Again, the feral kid's backstory remained a mystery for years, nobody knew what it is. But it was most definitely not forgotten by the creators of Mad Max. The same idea of the crashed plane, uh, the parents that left, and feral children was used as the central point of Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, with all the kids and the crack in the earth. It's actually quite funny, but apparently each time Emil Minty watches Beyond Thunderdome with his father, they say that they had come up with that plotline. And they're absolutely right, they have. So once again, this was an unused idea from Mad Max 2, but it resurfaced just four years later in the third sequel. Speaking of which, let's have a look at unused ideas from Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome that made their way to Fury Road, because that's what I think is the most fascinating. Let's start small. In the original script to Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, there's a shot of Max overlooking Barter Town. 
The description of the shot is what caught my attention. We see Max standing on a hill, looking down on a plane, while there's a lizard resting on a rock in the foreground. Of course, in Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, there was no lizard in the foreground, but the same picture showed up as the opening shot of Fury Road, down to the lizard sitting on a rock right in front of the camera. So obviously, the same unused idea was repurposed for the sequel. But that's just a very minor thing. Let's go to the most interesting thing that was scrapped from Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. This is something that came to my attention just recently. A kind gentleman by the name of Jim Tang Dorsey, who also cosplays as none else but the Lord Humongous himself, showed me some very rare behind the scenes photos from Beyond Thunderdome. Those pictures show early versions of vehicles from Beyond Thunderdome, and one of those cars really stood out to me. It's the strange silver truck marked as Max number two. It took me a second, but I realized that this was in fact Max's camel wagon after it's been stolen from him and it was tricked out in Barter Town. It was going to be the only car with clean and bare metal panels out of all of the cars in Beyond Thunderdome. It would also have a somewhat similar shape to Max's interceptor from Mad Max 2, with the roof spoiler and a set of tanks in the back. This design was very unique, and obviously way different from all the cars in the movie, and of course it was not used in Beyond Thunderdome as well, but then something clicked in my head. I mean, the whole idea of this car is exactly the same thing that happened to Max's car in Fury Road. Let's compare. Max loses his car in Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, and he also loses his car in Fury Road. His car is then modified by mechanics in Barter Town, and by mechanics in the Citadel. Then, like we saw in the pictures, Max's car would have been turned into a bare metal off-roader, and in Fury Road, Max's car is being turned into a bare metal off-roader as well. I think the only reason we didn't see bare metal panel version of Max's car in Beyond Thunderdome is because it looked too futuristic and totally out of place. But evidently, this idea was stuck in Miller's mind long enough to repurpose it for Fury Road 30 years later, where Max's car is taken away from him and is turned into a bare metal off-road version. So in a way, I guess it seems that Max's camel wagon was the original Razor Cola from Fury Road. I find it really fascinating how many unused ideas have carried over from one Mad Max movie to the next, and I hope that you find those little bits of trivia interesting as well. Again, thank you for watching, and if you liked this video, please leave a like and a comment and subscribe for more. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, stay shiny and chrome.